everyone, this is Yuan and welcome to a new episode. Today, I would love to share the Biru backpack project. This is a boxy type kind of backpack. The finished measurements are about 9 inch by 12 inch by 3 and 3 quarter inch deep for the small version. This backpack comes with a small little zipper pocket in the front. There are two little slip pockets on the side. Comes with, of course, a zipper closure. In the interior, there is a zipper pocket and two slip pockets. Also a large padded compartment, perfect for your tablet, iPad, or books. So these backpacks are great for outdoor adventures, traveling, everyday errands if you prefer to wear backpack. I also create the large version of this backpack. The finished measurements of the large one is uh, about 10 and a half inch by 13 and a half inch by four and three quarter inch. It has pretty much the same feature as the smaller version in terms of the pockets. However, for the larger version, the padded pocket compartment can also hold a 13 inch laptop and it comes with the elastic strap to secure the laptop in place. So this can also function as the laptop backpack. For the main exterior fabric, I recommend to choose canvas fabric or any other thicker fabric such as denim or heavier linen. I have a free pattern available for you you to make the smaller version so you can go grab it at yoansewingstudio.com. For this project there will be some pattern pieces that you will need to print out and assemble but some of the patterns will be measuring and cutting kind so you will get some cutting instructions. I also have the premium pattern available for you to purchase if you're interested. The premium one will include the pattern for the large version as well and also the full written instructions for both the small version and the large version. So that can be purchased at yoansewingstudio.com as well. So all the links I will put in the description box down below. So I hope you enjoyed this project and without further ado, let's jump straight into it. First, of course, you wanna print out and assemble the pattern pieces. Make sure to test the square. So you wanna line up these ovals matching the alphabet label. So you can either fold back or cut one of the pages margin. And once you've done that, you wanna slide the other page behind it. Aligning the oval and all the other lines, make sure there is no overlapping here. And then tape them together. So you should end up with something like this. Next, you wanna cut the pattern pieces according to the cutting instructions. If the pattern piece indicates to be cut on fold, do cut your fabric on fold. And if it is the measuring and cutting kind of panels, simply follow the measurements instructions. Once you've done cutting, immediately snip the top and bottom center folds, about quarter of an inch max. And if there is a notch marking, make sure to cut the notch as well. When cutting the front side panel, you wanna fold the fabric and then place the pattern on top, just like that. Then you wanna cut all around. So you will get two panels simultaneously, one for the left front and one for the right front. Once you've cut the main panels and the front side panels, make sure to mark the top edges of each panel. On your pattern piece, there should be indication of the top. I haven't added it when I filmed this, but you should have it in yours. So you can simply pin the top edges or uh, make an X with fabric marker, whichever it is, so you won't miss it. We do this so that we won't mess with the position of the notches. They should be at the upper side. For the stabilizer, we're going to use fusible foam stabilizer. So you want to cut accordingly, one for the back exterior, one for the interior pocket, and one for the bottom gusset. Take the upper front pocket panel, and then measure from the bottom edges one and a half inch, and then draw a straight line there. Of course, you want to use disappearing fabric marker. Once you've done that, you want to measure one inch above the one and a half inch line, and then draw also a straight line there. You want to use nylon coil per size zipper, at least 8 inches long. My zipper is a little too long than what's required, so I trim it off a little bit. And then I hand stitch around the start of the zipper to keep the zipper tape closed. Now take the lower front panel with the right side facing up. Apply some basting tape along the top edges. Now take the zipper and lay that right side down. Apply some more basting tape along the top edges of the zipper tape. Now take the inner pocket panel. If your fabric has directional print like mine, you want to turn your fabric upside down just like that. Lay the inner pocket panel with the right side facing down, matching all the edges of course. 
once everything is secured, so with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. If you use zipper that is only 1 inch wide, you may reduce the seam allowance to quarter of an inch. Finger press the seams, both the exterior and interior as well. Try to get the seams to lay as flat as possible, and then top stitch. Next, we're going to attach the upper front panel. So again, we're going to use some basting tape. Apply that right along the edges of the zipper tape, just like that. Now lay the upper front panel with the right side facing down, matching the bottom edges of the front panel with the edges of the zipper, just like shown here. Now flip to the wrong side. Now again, we're going to apply some basting tape along the edges of the zipper. Bring the bottom edge of the inner pocket panel towards the zipper tape, matching the edges, of course. Once everything is secured, you want to stitch also with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, finger press the seams and top stitch. Next, you want to fold the first line, the 1.5 inch line there, just like that. And then press right along the fold to make it nice and crisp. When you press, be mindful of the zipper. Make sure that your iron will not touch the zipper teeth. Now bring the fold down to overlap the zipper up to about quarter of an inch of the top stitching line of the lower panel, just like so. Secure the fold with a couple of sewing clips. At this point, the second line should be sitting about an eighth of an inch or so from the edge of the zipper. Once everything is secured, you want to stitch right on the second line. So you should have a little flap just like this. Next, we're going to secure the pocket by stitching along the side edges, starting from the pocket flap down to the bottom. And you want to use about quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now let's trim off the excess zipper here. So we want this panel to measure 12 inches tall. There should be a little bit of excess fabric there. So you want to simply trim off the bottom edge so that the height of this panel will be 12 inches tall. And that's it. Now we're going to call this panel as the middle front panel. For the large version, you want to work pretty much the same way. However, when you trim off the bottom, you want to trim it off so that the middle panel will measure 14 inches tall. Next, we're going to attach the side panel. So I'm going to start by sewing the right panel. So we're going to lay them right sides together and stitch with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Trim the seam allowances down to about quarter of an inch. Press the seams flat towards the side panel and be mindful with the zipper and then top stitch. So here I've already sewn both side panels and that's it. The front exterior panel is done. Next we're going to work on the handles. So you want to cut two strips of fabrics from the accent fabric. We're going to do the usual folding and pressing method to make the strap. Start by folding the short ends towards the wrong side about half an inch and then press. Repeat the same to the opposite side. Fold the long side in half and then press. Fold the long sides towards the center fold crease and then press just like that and then fold this one more time in half to make a one inch strip and then press. Stitch all around about an eighth of an inch from the edges starting from the open edge. Measure three inches from the end of the strap and then draw a straight line just like so. Repeat the same to the opposite side. Now you want to fold the strap in half lengthwise. Use some sewing clips to secure the fold, starting from the 3 inch point mark up to the opposite 3 inch point mark. And then stitch right along the open edges to secure the fold. Use about an eighth of an inch seam allowance or simply follow the existing seam line. And you want to work the same for the other strap. Next, we're going to mark the position of the strap. So you want to measure two and a quarter inch from the side and three and a half inch down from the top. And then mark that spot with disappearing fabric marker, just like shown on the screen right now. And you want to repeat the same to the opposite side. Measure two inches from the end of the strap and then draw a line to mark it. And then you want to draw an X from the corner of the two inch point mark down to the bottom, just like that. And of course, you want to do the same to the opposite side. 
Apply a little bit of fabric basting glue on the wrong side of the strap, right around the edges there. Now you want to use the mark as the guide to position the strap, just like shown here. So the end of the strap should be sitting at the three and a half inch point mark. The outer side of the strap should be sitting at the two and a quarter inch point mark. Press the strap with your fingers so that the glue will be sticking onto the fabric and temporarily holding onto the strap. Work the same way for the opposite side. If you want, you can pop a couple of pins to make it extra secured and then stitch the handle in place, make a rectangle from the 2 inch point mark and then go down simply following the existing seam line and then stitch the X to add extra reinforcement. Next, we're going to work on the back exterior. So first, you want to apply the fusible foam stabilizer. Position the foam on the wrong side of the back exterior panel, center position, and then fuse according to the manufacturer's instructions. Next, you want to install the handle with the same way and the same position as when we did the front exterior. For the large version, you want to work the handles the same way. However, the positioning is obviously different since this is larger size. So please refer to the pattern diagram for that. Next, we're going to work on the strap of the backpack. Let's prepare the strap connector. Cut four pieces from the pattern, two for each side. Fold the short side towards the wrong side about a quarter of an inch and then press. And then top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance to hold the fold in place. And you want to do this to all four panels. Take two of the strap connector pieces, lay them right sides together, and then stitch along the side edges with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now you can turn this right side out and press the seams flat. Work the same for the other pair. So you should end up with two strap connectors. For the ring tabs, you want to cut two pieces of four inch square fold and press in a fourth just like that and then stitch along the edges now back to the strap connector you want to position that on the right side of the back exterior panel about one inch from the bottom edge now you want to position the strap connector on an angle about 45 degree or so you can secure this with a sewing clip repeat the same to the opposite side Stitch the strap connectors in place about quarter of an inch from the edge of the main panel. Once you've done that, you can trim off the excess fabric there. Measure three quarter of an inch from the edge of the strap connector and then draw a straight line using your fabric marker. And take one of the ring tab and then attach the rectangular ring and then stitch as close as you can to the ring. Measure one inch from the raw edge of the ring tab and then mark it with a straight line there. Insert the ring tab into the strap connector. Let it slide inside up to the one inch mark line. Next, we're going to stitch around starting from the top stitching line to the side up to the mark line. Make around there. Now let's secure this with a couple of clips and then stitch to secure the tab in place. Now we're going to work on the strap of the backpack. So you want to cut two strips of fabric fold and press the strap in half lengthwise fold one of the end of the strap towards the wrong side about half an inch to hide the raw edges and leave the opposite end the way it is now the next step is optional grab a strip of fusible fleece about seven eight inch wide or a little shy from one inch position that on the wrong side about one inch down from one of the long side edges about half an inch away from the unfinished short edge just like so so the strip should be about 30 inches long we're not going to apply this fusible fleece for the entire strap if you can't get one full length of 30 inch simply cut several pieces and fuse them right next to each other once you fuse the fusible fleece, you want to continue uh, folding and pressing the strap in a fourth, just like when we make the ring tab, so that you will have a one inch strap. And once you've done that, stitch all around the edges with an eighth of an inch seam allowance starting from the open edge. Now take the slider, hold it right side up, and then you want to thread the end of the strap, the one with the finished edge, from the wrong side towards the right side and then back to the wrong side. Pull the strap through about one and a half inch and then stitch, make a rectangle to secure the strap. 
Set the slider aside with the end of the strap facing up. Now grab the unfinished end of the strap and then thread it to one of the rectangular ring from the inner side to the outer side. Now take the slider. Now hold it with the right side facing up just like that. Thread this end of the strap. Pull the strap through. At this time, you want to make sure that the strap isn't twisted. And this end of the strap should now be hidden under just like that. Now we're going to position this uh, remaining end of the strap on the top edge right next to the handle. The one that is the same side as the strap connector. Go about quarter of an inch over the edge. And again, you want to make sure that the strap isn't twisted and everything is in the correct position. Now you want to stitch this with about quarter of an inch seam allowance to hold the strap in place. All right, your strap should look just like this. Now work the exact same way for the opposite side. Now we're going to work on the strap handle, so fold and press the panel. Start by folding the short sides towards the wrong side about half an inch, and then fold the long sides in a fourth, just like when you make the strap. And then stitch all around the edges about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Measure half an inch from one of the short side, and then mark it right on the center. Then you want to install the female button on that mark. Now you want to measure and mark half an inch from the opposite end and then install the male button. So you want to make sure to install the button stud on the same side as the button's cap. Next we're going to work on the interior of the backpack. So let's start from the front interior zipper pocket. So this is my pocket panel. On the wrong side of the pocket panel you want to draw the zipper template just like shown on the screen right now. If you're working on the large version, the template will be obviously larger. Please refer to the diagram that I provided in the pattern. Position the zipper pocket panel on the right side of the front interior panel with the right side facing down about one inch from the top edge. Pin to secure this in place and then stitch right on the outline of the template. Cut the center line and the corner triangles. When you cut the corners, just be careful not to cut through the stitches. Now let's flip the pocket to the wrong side and then press to neaten all the edges. Apply some basting tape along the edges of the zipper tape. Lay the zipper template on top of the zipper. You want to center the position and then stitch all around to secure the zipper. Once you've done that, if there is any excess zipper, you can trim that off. Next, you want to bring the bottom edge of the pocket panel towards the top, matching it with the top edge of the pocket panel. Pin to secure this in place, and then stitch the sides and the top with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. When you sew, make sure to get the main panel out of the way. And that's it guys, the zipper pocket is done and ready to go. Next, we're going to work on the front slip pockets. Fold the pocket panel in half widthwise, and then stitch along the top edges with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, go to your ironing board and then press the seams open. Turn the pocket right side out and then press it again and then top stitch along the top edges. Fold the pocket panel in half widthwise and then press to create a center fold crease. Position the pocket panel on the right side of the front panel about 4 inch from the top edge. Secure the pocket with some pins or sewing clips. On the wrong side, you want to fold the zipper pocket panel towards the top edge to get it out of the way and then secure with a clip. Now stitch the sides and the bottom and then stitch along the center fold line to divide the pocket into two slots. Stitch the sides with quarter of an inch seam allowance and stitch the bottom with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And there you have it. Next, we're gonna snip the notches for the pocket. Simply follow the existing ones from the main panel. Next, we're gonna work on the padded pocket for the back interior. So apply the foam stabilizer on the wrong side of the pocket exterior and center the position. Lay the pocket exterior and the lining right sides together and then stitch the top edges. Press the seams open and then flip to the right side. Press the top edges and then top stitch along the top edges. Position the pocket panel on the right side of the back interior panel with the right side facing up. Secure with some clips and then stitch the sides and the bottom of the pocket with quarter of an inch seam allowance. And that's it. The pocket is done. 
Now for the large version, we're gonna add the elastic strap to keep your laptop or other belongings secure since this is a larger pocket. I managed to fuse this foam on my nylon ripstop fabric. I set up my iron on synthetic setting. So if you use this type of fabric for your lining, you may want to do a little bit of testing beforehand just to make sure that you get the proper setting. Now, if for some reasons you cannot have your foam fused to the fabric, you may instead simply quilt this, stitch some straight lines horizontally, maybe two or three lines to hold the foam in place. Mark two and a half inch from the top edge of the pocket and then mark it right on the center. Cut the soft side of the velcro or what we call the loop about one and a half inch. Apply a little bit of basting glue to the wrong side of the velcro. Position that about two and a half inch from the top edge. So use the marking as the guide. And you want to place the velcro lengthwise just like so. And then stitch all around the edges about an eighth of an inch. Make a rectangle there. Now you may continue working on this pocket just like shown previously with the small version. Now cut a piece of a binding, um, the same width as the elastic, and then bind one of the end of the elastic. I simply insert the end of the elastic into the binding and then stitch along the edges of the fold. Now you want to cut the hook of the velcro, the one with the rough surface, also about one and a half inch. Apply some basting glue on the wrong side and then position that on the wrong side of the elastic strap about quarter of an inch from the edge lengthwise just like shown here and then stitch all around make a rectangle about an eighth of an inch from the edge next you want to match the velcro just like that and then stitch the elastic strap in place about quarter of an inch from the top edge of the main panel and once you've done that you can trim off the excess elastic Lay the front exterior and the front interior with the wrong sides facing. Use some sewing clips to secure them and then stitch all around with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to work the same for the back panel. After you've sewn the back panels together, you can trim off the excess fabric of the straps. Next, we're going to work on the zipper panels. So you want to cut two strips, one pair for the exterior and one pair for the interior. The smaller strip will be for the front side of the zipper panel and the larger strip will be for the back side of the zipper panel. I like to first find the center fold of each of these panels, simply fold them in half widthwise and then snip along the edges of the center fold about quarter of an inch max. On the right side of the back zipper panel, you want to measure two and a quarter inch from the side where the zipper is going to be installed and then draw a straight line there. Please ignore this line here, it's a mistake. So later on, you want to attach the zipper on this side. Now let's prepare the zipper. For this project, you will need a double pull zipper, at least 20 inches long. Mine is much longer here because I don't have the one exactly 20 inch. And that's totally fine. Since this is a nylon coil zipper, it's pretty versatile because you can always trim off any excess zipper. Mark the center point of the zipper, both on the right side and on the wrong side as well. Lay the front exterior zipper panel. Apply some basting tape along the edges, just like so. Now take the zipper and you want to lay that right side down, matching the center point. Apply some basting tape along the top edges of the zipper there. And then take the front zipper lining panel and lay that right side down, matching the center point and all the edges. And then stitch with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now let's flip to the right side and you want to finger press the seams as flat as you can. Make sure that there's no extra pleats. Match the raw edges of the exterior and the lining and then pin just like shown here. And then top stitch along the edges. Now you want to lay the exterior back zipper panel with the right side facing up. Again, we're going to install the zipper on this side from which we take the measurement of the two and a quarter inch line, which will be the overlapping line for the zipper later. Apply some basting tape along the edges there. Now take the zipper and lay that right side down, of course, matching the center point first and all the edges. Apply some more basting tape along the edges of the zipper and then take the lining panel and lay that right side down. Once everything is secured, stitch with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, flip to the right side, finger press the seams 
And then just like what we did with the front, you wanna match the row edges and then pin and then top stitch. Now you wanna make a fold right on the mark line there, just like so, and then press. So you should have a crease line there. Next, you want to measure three quarter of an inch from the crease line and then draw a straight line. Now we're going to bring the fold over towards the zipper area, creating a casing just like what we did with the front zipper pocket. So you want the edges of the overlap here to sit right on the top stitching line, just like that. Now you can pop a few pins to secure the overlap. At this point, you want to make sure that the 3 quarter of an inch line is sitting about an eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch from the edges of the zipper. This doesn't have to be exact, but just make sure that the line is sitting on the zipper tape so that as we stitch this, it will secure the overlap on the zipper. So let's stitch right on the mark line. I switched my zipper foot to walking foot. I just find it much easier to sew with walking foot when there is multiple layers of fabric. Now let's move the zipper pulls towards the center. And then we're going to trim off this zipper panel according to the measurements that we're looking for. So lengthwise, we want this panel to be 19 inches long. I purposely called for a slight larger measurements so that there is room for error or a little bit of mistakes. First, let's trim off the excess zipper here. Next, we're going to trim off the short sides so that the entire zipper will measure 19 inches. So you want to start by trimming off one of the sides, just a little bit, about a quarter of an inch max. Make sure to straighten up the edges there. Once you've done that, you want to measure exactly 19 inch and then trim off any excess fabric from the opposite end. Next, we're going to take care of the long sides. So first, we're going to trim off the front panel or the shorter panel here. So you want to take away about half an inch. So make sure that everything is nice and straight. There you go. Now you want to measure four and a half inch from the front. Make sure everything is nice and straight there. And then trim off the excess fabric and that's it. So this should now measure 19 inch by 4.5 inch. Now let's stitch all around with about quarter of an inch seam allowance. And now we're going to call this panel zipper gasset. Next you want to mark the center point of this zipper gasset. So you want to simply measure 9.5 inch from the edge and then mark it with disappearing fabric marker both on the right side and on the wrong side as well. Next, we're going to work on the lower gusset panel. First, you want to fold this in half and then snip the center fold about a quarter of an inch or so. Now take the foam stabilizer, fold this in half just so you get the center fold crease and then position that on the wrong side of the lower gusset panel matching the center fold and then fuse this in place according to the manufacturer's instructions. Okay, now we're going to work on the side pockets. So take the pocket panel lay them right sides together and then stitch the top and the bottom with quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to press the seams open and then turn the pocket right side out. Press it again and then top stitch along the top edges. Lay the pocket panel on the right side of the lower gusset panel about one inch down from the short side edges, just like shown here. Clip to secure this in place and then stitch the sides with quarter of an inch seam allowance and the bottom with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So you should end up with something like this. Now you want to repeat to sew and install the pocket to the opposite side. With the exterior lower gusset panel right side up, you want to take the zipper gusset and lay that right side down, matching one of the short side edges, just like so. Now take the lower gusset lining panel and lay that right side down. So you're kind of making a sandwich there, and of course you want to match the edges there. Now let's secure this in place with some clips and then stitch with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that, trim off the seam allowance to quarter of an inch and then flip to the right side, finger press the seams as flat as you can, both the exterior and the interior, and then top stitch. We're going to work the same to the opposite side. So with the right sides facing, you want to match the edges of the zipper gusset and the exterior lower gusset just like that. Now flip to the wrong side and then bring the lower lining gusset and then match the edges with the zipper gusset. Again, making a sandwich just like so. Now let's stitch this in place with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And just like before, you want to turn this right side out and then press the seams and top stitch. 
Next, you want to pin the exterior lower gasset and the lining together. So you can use pin or sewing clips. Starting from the center point, this is just to secure them together. And then stitch along the edges of the lower gasset with about quarter of an inch seam allowance. And once you've done that, you want to call this panel the cassette panel. Now it's time to assemble the back, so let's lay the front panel right side up. Take the cassette panel and you want to lay that right side down. First, you want to match the center point of the front zipper panel, the narrow panel there, with the center point of the upper front panel. And then secure with a clip or pin. Now you want to match the center point of the lower gusset with the center point of the lower front and then clip. Next, you want to match the seam in between the zipper and the lower gusset here with the notch, just like that. And then clip and then you want to do the same to the opposite side. Now that we've got all the four points secure, we're going to continue securing the edges all around. You can use pin or sewing clips. However, you want to leave out the corners since we're going to baste the corners with hand stitching. Grab a hand sewing needle and thread and then we're going to hand baste the corners. So what you can do, you can snip the edges of the gusset about an eighth of an inch to quarter of an inch max. And then you want to hand baste this with running stitches. Snipping the edges will help the fabric to lay flat around the corners. Now you may not be able to go all the way to the edge and that's totally fine. Just make sure that the gusset will lay flat around the corner. All right, so here I've already basted the upper corners. Now we're going to work the same for the lower corners. All right, once you've secured all the edges and basted all the corners, we're going to stitch all around the gusset. So with the gusset facing up, starting from one of the side, use 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. However, as you get to the corner, you may want to reduce the seam allowance to quarter of an inch from the edge of the gusset. Now, you may want to go a little slowly around the corner. Just make sure that the gusset fabric lays flat. Alright, so you should end up with something like this. Okay, now you want to unzip the zipper all the way down and then turn this panel wrong side out, just like that. Now take the back panel and then we're going to attach the gusset with the right sides facing. Work the same way as we did the front. So let's uh, get this handle out of the way and then start by matching the upper center point and then match the lower center point and the notches. So you want to secure this all around and hand baste the corners of course and then stitch this in place. Just like when attaching the front, you want to stitch with the gusset facing up, use 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then reduce the seam allowance to quarter of an inch as you get to the corner. All right, guys, once you've assembled your back, you can turn this right side out just to see how it turns out for now. Mine is looking pretty good here. Now let's turn this wrong side out again and you can trim off the excess fabric around the corners. For the large version, you want to work pretty much the same way here. And then we're going to finish this backpack by binding the seam allowances using bias tape. This is a pre-made double fold bias tape, half an inch wide. Open the fold and then match the edges of the fold with the raw edges, just like that. And then stitch this in place about quarter of an inch from the edge. When you sew, you want to start about a couple of inches away from the edge of the binding so that you will have enough fabric to overlap in order to join the ends of the binding later. So you want to continue stitching all around and as you get closer to where you start, you want to stop about 3 to 4 inches away from the starting point. Next, we're going to overlap the binding strip by half an inch. So I'm just going to eyeball it. You can certainly measure and mark it beforehand. All right, now I'm going to pinch the fabric right here a little bit and then secure with a clip. This will give you a little bit of extra room to overlap the strip. Now let's open all the folds and then lay the ends of the strip right sides together just like that. And then stitch in place. Use half an inch seam allowance or the same as the overlapping width. It may be a little finicky to get this on the sewing machine, but it is doable. 
finger press the seams open and then you want to continue stitching picking up from where you left off up to the starting point now let's fold the binding over to the opposite side so that it will be hugging the row edges and then secure with some clips all right guys once everything is secured you want to finish this binding so you can either stitch on the gusset side along the edges to secure the binding so this method will be obviously quicker. Another method, which is my preferred method, is to finish the binding with hand stitching. This will give you a nice and clean finish. So you want to perform slip stitches, simply alternating, picking the binding and then the fabric. When you pick the fabric though, make sure that you don't go all the way to the exterior fabric. So just pick the lining fabric. And that's it guys, your backpack is done. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and until next time, goodbye.